Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, my name is Trim. I'm a product manager at IOG, and I'm stepping in to do the presentation about IOGON. Um, for those of you who don't know, I was a part of the early IOGON team, transitioning them from Ethereum over to a uh, Cardano-based solution. So I know the system pretty well. Um, wrote some of the algorithms and uh, know the team pretty well. So I'm most excited about the sort of tail end of this uh, presentation. So I'm going to you know, go a little bit quickly through the first ones, uh, because I really want to talk about the use cases and sort of how this thing can be actually put into the real world and you know, the next steps ahead. So very quickly about Iagon. Um, very short sort of description. It's the Airbnb of storage and computing. So when you're thinking about cloud storage computing, uh, typically you're thinking about AWS, uh, Google, you know, these big sort of services that, that provide, provide this. Whereas blockchain is all about decentralizing, uh, you know, stuff like infrastructure and other applications. And this is actually a perfect example of that because most people have spare storage. They're not using all of the storage on their device. You know, you're specking up your computer way more than what you actually need. What if you can actually rent out that storage into a storage network and earn some revenue from it? Same thing goes for compute. Um, now, this is actually backed by government grants. Uh, Innovation Norway, there's a lot of, uh, lot of actual you know, institutional backing from this because it's a very important use case. So the team that are currently working on this, it's very academic heavy. Well, not just academics, you know, they're, they're applied as well, but you know, there's a lot of PhDs, uh, 31 full-time members uh, spread across the world in Canada, Norway, Nepal, Australia, and many more. So quickly about the storage market, you know, this is no surprise for everyone, for anyone, but it's a huge market and it's only going to grow. I remember when I entered into data science, um, they mentioned data is the new oil. It's so important to everyone and all the applications that big data and storage, you know, that actually needs needed to host this data, is really critical. And you know, it's estimated that by 2030, uh, the actual requirements or or the the demand on the market side is going to you know 10x, and the market size is estimated to to reach 2.4 trillion US dollars. Now, the way that the, uh, the Iagon computing uh, or cloud system works is you have resource providers. Now, these can be professional, um, you know, institutional grade resource providers like data centers, or they can be, you know, people who have spare resources on their devices. Now, you want to make use of these things. And on the other hand, you have, you know, business customers uh, that need storage of data for different use cases that we'll, we'll discover. Uh, and retail customers. So you know, if you have if you have a Google Drive, if you back up your uh, phone and your pictures every now and again, you know, you're going to need something, uh, ideally a cloud solution for this, so that you can change out your phone, you can change out your laptop, and it doesn't vanish. Now, we can combine these two things with the Igon Marketplace, and the way that that works is we have the Alexandria AI protocol that manages the which nodes that you as a user are assigned to based on your demands. So for most people, they don't really care about you know, where necessarily these devices are. So you'll just get assigned to the most performant ones. But for some use cases, for example, medical data or sensitive information, you have to have you know, GDPR compliance built in. And that's exactly what the Igon solution does. So you can select for exactly which region that you want to use storage from, and you get assigned only nodes, so your files, only get stored on nodes in the region that you are accepting. So you as the customer are able to sort of really go down into the nitty gritty and you have GDPR compliance by default. Also, it's very, very secure using encryption and blockchain for managing you know, access rights, for managing the actual encryption of the files. And the secure lake technology is you know, something that I, I'm, I'm very happy about. It's one of the you know, core contributions that I, I made to the Iagon protocol which is basically the way that the files are split up and distributed across the system. So in a couple of steps, how that works, you have your data. The first step is you encrypt that data. So you know, if someone actually get, manages to get a hold of the whole file, then they're not able to get anything from it because it's encrypted. The second part is you encode it. And this is a technical thing where you know, 
is basically allowing you to restore the file even if you lose parts of it. Then you apply the compliance conditions, which is what I just mentioned. So for example, if you have sensitive data about Norwegian citizens, uh, which is where I'm from. Rare Evo 2025 tickets are on sale now. Save big. General admission passes are discounted to $250. And VIP passes are only $800. Join us August 7th through 9th, 2025 at Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. Hurry, only 30 days left to save. Visit rareevo.io and buy your tickets now. You have to store that data within the bounds of Norway. And a lot of countries are rolling out rules like this across the world. You know, it's, uh, oh, uh, they're, they're called different things in, in different regions. Uh, GDPR is sort of the European version, but there are uh, others as well that are very similar in how they work. So you select for where in the network that it's actually going to be stored, and then it's distributed to only the part of the network that is acceptable to your conditions. And then when you want to get back, you query the, the network, you get uh, the shards that this, you know, the file is split up into multiple shards, and you get the shards back, put together the file, decode it, decrypt it, and you're able to access it. And you can actually manage who is able to access the files using blockchain and authentication. So Iagon actually launched on mainnet in December last year. Uh, this is some stats from, from February. Uh, it's you know, improved since then, but the, um, there's a lot of storage already committed to the network. It's hosted you know, uh, already a couple of websites. Many people are already subscribing to this storage. Uh, there are 500 plus nodes all across the world in 51 countries and 268 cities. Some of these are institutional grade, like data centers. A lot of them are just you know, regular people that have extra storage and they want to co contribute to this decentralized um, physical infrastructure network. So it's one of the benefits of a solution like Iagon is that you can actually transform idle capacity, which is, you know, you're not using all of the storage on your, net, on, on your device. You're not using your computer at all times of the day. So why not rent out that spare capacity and earn revenue from it? Um, and the data is, is actually really protected. I see that this line hasn't been updated since <laughs> I requested it, but basically it's, it's using something that's called a frozen lake um, technology. So if you're familiar with data science, you've probably experienced uh, data lakes, which is a way of storing data where everyone, everything is sort of in the same place. And if you're able to access the data, you can access all of the data, which is you know, very good if you're building you know, a data science application. But it's not so good if a hacker is able to actually breach your system. Because if they're able to get one file, they're able to get everything. In the frozen lake architecture that you know, this system is using, even if a hacker managed to hack, breach the system, collect all of the shards for a file, somehow decode it and decrypt it, they're only able to get that one file. So that means they're not able to get you know, the file next to it or the, the one next to that. So it's like a frozen lake where you cannot just swim around in the data looking for whatever it is that you want. You're actually um, prevented from that through the technology and, and how it's applied. So this is the exciting part, the, the future. What, what's, what's actually in wait for Iagon? Um, one of these things is decentralized cloud computing. So what's currently on mainnet is the decentralized storage. Computing is next. Um, and computing is, from what I was told, told um, <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm not a part of the team, you know, core team anymore, so I don't follow the day-to-day -day development, but the compute has launched to the, their beta at the moment. So you can actually test this out. And they had a hackathon uh, not too long ago where you were able to actually use the compute part to, to make a, uh, an application. So this is, really, uh, this is a really interesting one because what are the use cases of something like this? Well, you can use it for the exact same things you can use any you know, cloud-based uh, infrastructure for. You can do hosting of websites. You can do hosting of applications. You can build dApps, you know, metaverses. You can actually, use, you can even use mining of different resources. You could, in principle, host, you know, stake pools on this. 
uh, gaming uh, servers. You know, th there's endless applications that you would normally use the uh, you know regular cloud uh, services for. But in addition to that, I do think that because of the integration with the Web3 part for the authentication and the file management, there's a few things that people you know maybe not consider as possible yet that I would really lo like to see people you know think about and pick up. One of those is because of the payment of the storage is handled on chain, essentially you could have a DAO, a decentralized autonomous uh, organization, pay for its own front end. So imagine you have a DAP, you have a DEX or a DeFi protocol or an NFT project or whatever it happens to be. You can actually take the treasury funds of that project and pay for the hosting of the infrastructure so that as long as the project is actually generating a revenue into the treasury, it's able to sustain itself. And you're no longer reliant on a centralized actor that has, you know, access to the servers and is able to pull down the front end on demand or if they, you know, happen to get, um, um, get subpoenaed. So you can have self-hosting dApps, which is something that I think is, is really interesting. In addition to that, uh, we have IPFS for NFTs, but with one of the problems with IPFS is it's static storage. So once you put a file into the IPFS network, uh, you know, it's indexed by the hash of the data, so you cannot change even a pixel of that data without having to reissue the whole thing. With Iagon, you can, in principle, you know, update the data. And you can still use the same reference and access control elements from the Web3 uh, elements for, from the blockchain parts. So you can, in principle, make, you know, dynamic NFTs, NFTs that are much bigger or do much more complex things. So you could, you could set up a service like a miner or a stake pool or something like this, which is then tokenized the access to this thing, and then you can sell that token. So you, you can imagine the type of applications that you could, in principle, see with this. So that's one of the things that I'm really excited about, you know, people starting to pick at this thing up, looking at what can we actually use this thing for that is unique to this approach, and then deploying applications. One of these applications is uh, Click. Now, I wasn't really sure what this thing was. You know, I, I just saw a couple of tweets and I was like, okay, well, you know, sounds a little bit over the top, I guess, with, you know, another uh, connecting network uh, QR cat scanning thing. But when I saw this thing in action, I was like, okay, this is actually pretty cool. So what this thing is, you upload all of your contact info, like what you would have on a business card. It's stored on the Iagon storage network and you get a QR code. Okay, so far so, you know, simple. But then when someone scans the QR code, it literally loads it into your phone. So as a contact on your phone, suddenly you have all of this data pulled in from the Iagon cloud. And they pull this together pretty quickly, just as a showcase of the kind of application you can run on this. This one is a really exciting one. So Cyclone is actually a hardware component. It comes in a couple of different sizes. Oh yeah, <laughs> I asked if they could bring one up because, you know, you don't believe it until you see it. So this is one of the machines. This is one of a kind, you know, it has this uh, pretty uh, painting on it, which actually glows in the dark, which is pretty rad. I don't think we can turn off the lights, but you have to trust me on that. Um, the regular one though, it, it looks sick as well. And these things, they come in with different specs, but the, you know, the powerful one has a mirrored 18 terabyte storage capacity, which you can basically just plug and play it and then connect it to your Ivan account and provide storage with this thing just on your desk. And you can use it as a network attached storage as well if you, uh, if you don't want to um, provide the whole thing. Now, 18 terabytes of storage, that is, you know, quite an amount. And with the way that Iagon works, where you have to stake IOG tokens for the uh, actual resources you provide to the network, you may not have enough tokens to actually do that. Thank you, by the way. Um, and there is a solution for that. Basically, what you can do is you can, you can purchase the device, you can set it up, and whatever Iagon tokens you have, you know, you can commit maybe one terabyte or, or whatever you want. For the rest of it, you can actually announce that and have other people be able to stake to your node for a revenue share model. So you have the hardware, other people have the tokens, they stake to your node, and combined, you split the revenue from that node. And you can you know, just leave it on. It's, um, 
I don't know. I, I think it looks kind of cool. It's a talking piece. You know, you can have it on your desk at, at work. Um, and yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm, I'm really cool. It, it's, it's one of these things where the network is there, the protocol is there, but when you have it in your hand, it becomes much more real, even though, you know, it's literally the same thing going on underneath the hood. So, yeah, I encourage people to, you know, if you have any ideas for applications, feel free to contact the team. They have a Telegram group. Uh, you can explore the ecosystem at app.iagon.com. And yeah, I think that's, uh, that's about it. Thank you. Enjoying the event? Fire up that wallet and delegate your ADA to Rare Stake Pool. For over three years, Rare has been committed to providing high quality staking services. And we're now Chang Hard Fork ready. Thank you for your support.